All right, welcome back. You can see Jalen Hurts taking off the glove. He's been practicing with the glove all week, but he just got it taped. I got my finger taped just like Jalen Pate. When I saw he dislocated his finger, I wanted to try it out and see how important the middle finger is to throwing a football. And so I kind of found Pate, the thumb is important, the pinky, the index finger, you really don't need the middle finger to throw a football. I've been practicing it all week in the backyard. First couple times, not a little wobbly, but all week end up being great. But I think he's going to be fine, Pate. He seems to be putting pressure on the ball with that middle finger. And I think he's going to be able to throw it just fine today. I tried it out a couple times too, Eli. I mean, I was throwing a lot of wobbly passes, but I always throw wobbly passes. So what's exactly? It, it was really no difference. So I appreciate you actually, you know, dislocating your finger, stepping it up for the playoffs, right? Sacrifice in the playoffs. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. You know, you got to do it. It's playoff time. Uh, you know, we don't get to call that many playoff games. We got uh, we got Barry Sanders. You know, he well, thought you were about to tell us you dislocated your finger, tested out. I scrapped the idea for the Sanders cast, and I saw your dedication here. Hey, Barry, playoffs, baby. I know Detroit's in the playoffs, right? You guys are feeling it, right? Eli and I like to step up our game in the playoffs as well. Good run there, Eli. Put me on the prediction panel. Oh, yeah. Baker, good pocket movement. Go, go. go. Eli, Ma Eli. Oh, man, man, to man to man, man to man. The safety and the corner run into each other. They have a collision, right? It's kind of one robber. There's a safety in the middle of the field. He runs into the corner. They knock oh, no. each other off the path. Yeah, wide open. They run into it. All right, let's welcome in former Bucks Super Bowl winning head coach Bruce Arians. Coach, how much better is it to be introduced that way rather than the quarterback coach for the 98 Colts from some rookie named Peyton threw her NFL record 28 interceptions? <laughs> it, it's pretty sweet, Eli. It really is, baby. But I'm, I'm proud of those 28 interceptions. All right. <laughs> He, he told me once before. He said, every one. I thought you were the quarterback whisperer, man. You, I said I had to holler at you, baby. There was no whispering going on. But no, we erased we erased all those interceptions that second year. We That's sure right. did. We sure did. Yeah, uh, Bruce coached me those first three years. Eli, he kept me in there. He said, Peyton, he said you're going to learn some things in the third and fourth quarter of these losses, right? I took every snap, right? I like all these old quarterbacks now, and they struggle. They take them out, and that's why nobody's going to break that record, Bruce, right? you got to be a 16 or 17-game starter to break that record. So I think that one's safe, but he was loyal to me. He kept me in, and I did learn a lot. And like you said, first year to second year, uh, we turned it around in a hurry. Show the ball to the defense, getting them to attack the ball. Then we want to set the hook by dropping our head and shoulders and disguising the run and the pass. We want both to look the same. That was a long time ago, but those same coaching points still hold true today, Eli. Showing that ball to the defense, right? Some guys, when they fake, they kind of use a hand fake. Bruce taught me to use that ball fake. That's how you hand off. That's how you fake also. So that defense sees that, and you set the hook after, right, trying to get them to come forward. And now you pop up and find the defense. The fake is the reason that the receiver is going to be open, right? If you want to read the coverage, just drop back, right? But you want to have a great fake. That lot linebackers and safeties bite. Now the receivers and tight ends are wide open. So you see Baker does a lot of play action. It helps if the running game is good. We had a great running game back in 1999 because of a guy named Edgerin James. But play action's got to be a big part of what Tampa's going to do here uh, in these next three quarters. Coach, you had some high praise for Baker. Uh, back in the spring and uh, back in September, you said he really brought some life to this Bucks offense. Fast forward tonight, Baker's led uh, Tampa to a division title. What has impressed you most about what he's done this season? You know, it's not hard. When you're following Tom Brady, it's not easy, bro. You know that. You guys know that, man. Following you guys was not easy. And But he has a charisma. He's got a fire about him that I just love. I loved him coming out of school, had great grades on him, and uh, – I think he's just doing a tremendous job. He won this locker room over quick. Make a play. Come on. Came back to him, like you said. He'll keep coming back to him. That would have been a tough catch. 
right there to Evans. Bruce, you know, heading into playoffs, the Bucks have won five of six. Eagles have lost five of six. When you won your Super Bowl, you guys had won your last four games heading into the postseason. I'm curious, from the point of view of a head coach, does being hot heading into the playoffs matter? Oh, definitely, I think so. Your guys are playing with, they're practicing so hard with so much confidence. When you lose five out of six, you know, you're having player-only meetings all the damn time. You know, if you ain't having coach and player meetings, something's wrong. You know what I mean? And uh, no, I don't. I don't like that stuff at all. And I, I yeah, I, I definitely think coming in hot, playing full, full, full speed, practicing full speed, really makes a difference. Coach, one of the guys you coach on the roster is Mike Evans. Obviously, ten straight, year, ten years, ten years, a thousand yards receiving. He had to drop earlier, almost caught that one. You think that's going to get in his head, or you think he's one of those guys that say, hey, I dropped one, I'm going to come back and make up for it later in the game? Yeah, Mike, Mike is, Mike is the, the ultimate pro, man. He and Chris Godwin are the two most unselfish receivers I've ever coached. They pull for each other, their lockers are next to each other. But no, nothing phases Mike. He is, to me, one of the greatest receivers I've ever coached. Nice. I had some pretty good ones. Yeah. And, and, and just for the, just for our audience out there, unselfish and receiver in the same sentence is not normal. Okay, so that tells you a lot about Godwin and Evans. So uh, that's a strong compliment, Bruce. You've said the Bucks running back Rashad White uh, is your type of guy. He reminds you of Edwin James. That's the ultimate compliment. What makes you say that about White? Yeah, they're built the same, Peyton. You know, they, they, they look a lot alike, too. But, I mean, they got that. They look like they're doing everything in slow motion, and they're so fast. His hands are unbelievable. Uh, but he just makes it effortless, just like Edge did, you know. And, uh, yeah, I, I tried to hook them up together and uh, when, when he first came in. And I, I didn't quite get it done. But I, I would love for Edge to meet him because he is such a great kid, just like Edwin was. You, go, you going for it here, Coach? Well, you know, I keep hearing all these guys talk about the book says go for it. Who the hell wrote that book? <laughs> it wasn't Landry. It wasn't Lombardi. I don't know who wrote that book, you know. But, yeah, I'm going for it right here. <laughs> well, Coach, you were known for the uh, no risk it, no biscuit philosophy <laughs> of taking chances, you know. What does that mean exactly? And you know what? It's a way of life, baby. It ain't just calling plays, you know. I hit a lot of balls in the water trying to go for it in two. All right? And I can't do it anymore, but I still try. You know, you can't hit a great shot if you don't try. And uh, there you go. love the call here. That might have been a great time, too, Peyton, to take the shot. Yeah. Go right? with the hard I play mean, action shot. And, uh, the one thing about thir third and one, fourth and one, I mean, you know you're going to get – Man to man, for the most part, right? Yeah. And yeah. so, take one of those yeah. crossing routes again. We'll, we'll see if they come back to it. Good call here, right Nick. there. If you jump, uh, if you jump, you should just go block it. Don't let the guy kick it. Hard, Caden. Uh, ooh. I don't think Vita Vea. Vita Vea in there, Bruce. Did not get big, it. That's big body in there. That's the difference, baby. That's the difference. <laughs> when you put the big boy in there. We stopped him twice the last game we played him. <laughs> and uh, my man, you talk about an athlete now. I threw him a touchdown pass in Atlanta a couple years ago, Peyton. You'd have loved it. <laughs> he cut the counter roll pass down on the goal line for a touchdown. He is amazing. Oh. Hey, Coach, people seem to think that Peyton was the first person to say Omaha during a football game. He tricked them all, and then he named the company Omaha Productions. I've been going around telling everybody – I've been using Omaha way before he was doing it. And this week, my research team found an article that says you actually invented the Omaha Audible uh, when you were using it on punts. Is that true? And are you going to sue Peyton? <laughs> uh, I definitely think we need a little piece of the company. Uh, I think there's some paybacks <laughs> coming. But, yeah, we used to put our quarterback at 10 yards, and we'd get, we'd get in you know, three wideouts, two backs, and if they didn't send anybody back, he'd back up and punt it. That was Omaha. That was original Omaha. If they didn't do anything, we'd throw the ball down the field on a dig, dig, try to get a first down. But yeah, the Omaha, bro, you did not invent that. <laughs> <laughs>
There were no uh, players mic'd up back in the mid 80s at Temple, so there's no audio <laughs> proof. So, you know, we'll never know. Three Pete. Hey, Ray, this Eagles defense has kind of struggled the you know, last uh, kind of half of the regular season. They've even switched up their defensive coordinator. You know, how hard do you think that would be as a defensive players if you're trying to change a little bit of your philosophy, you know, halfway through the season? Yeah, it's a, it'll be really hard, Eli. I mean, the bottom line is everything is about rhythm, right? Uh, defense is like chemistry. And when you start to build towards that chemistry, you know, you see how uh, the Bucks are able to just run the ball. Everybody is playing as an individual. Like, there's no team cohesiveness to really put right white jersey in front of a white jersey. White jersey, miss, mix and match on what it looks like playing defense. And that's just not happening right now on the Eagles defense. And it's and it shows. It shows, man. They're, they're just not the same team that they were early in the year. You know, Ray, like, you know, Matt Patricia, like you said, he talked about how the Eagles need to get back to playing fast and aggressive as a defensive coordinator. You know, what kind of calls are you making to get the guys playing fast and aggressive? Is that more man-to-man, less zone blitz? Yeah, 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 Peyton. Actually, man, it's, it's just getting after the football, right? Take all of the gray area out of it, right? Sometimes you got to play blitz zones, but really cover zero, right? Cover one man under and just really just get after people so you don't have to guess right sometimes in zone you have to oh you should have dropped deeper or you should have had this nah man to man look get the ball out their hands fast let everybody know what their jobs are and just play freaking fast and that's the only way i always said you get a defense back on rhythm for sure what about going against a player like mike evans i mean obviously you weren't a defensive bat you're not covering but was that always kind of a mindset of the whole defense. Hey, let's not let one of their best players take over this game. Let's double him. Let's jam him. Let's always know where he is and just try to get him frustrated, take him out of the game plan. Yeah, absolutely. Most of the time, somebody like Mike, you're always going to cloud the backside, right? You're going to make sure the backside is locked up, right? So you can, you're always rolling the safety, but that safety is always cheating as well, right? And then yeah. sometimes you're telling the corner backside, if it's the right corner, right, you just got to take him one-on-one. But a lot of time, most of the game, you want to take that guy out of the game because it limits the offenses. Yeah, it's kind of, it, it's kind of our game plan for years. Yeah, for sure. Hey, Ray, did you go in there at halftime and give Philly a little pep talk? Because th- their D-line looks completely different. I mean, these guys, like you said, they are getting after the quarterback. They're playing fast and aggressive. But see, look at what's happening, though, right? Nobody's thinking, right? You, you see early in the game, Peyton, you mentioned it, right? Early in the game, you watch these defensive, defensive ends try to cover tight ends. That's not what they do, right? Put their hand in the ground and let them go forward. Hey, Ray, Ray, so we've seen Philadelphia in a lot of empty. I mean, it looks to me like whether they're calling it or it's an automatic check. I mean, the Tampa is just blitzing, blitzing more guys than Philly has to block whenever they have nobody in the backfield. Is that just something that's part of the game plan, you think? Hey, I think it's some part of the game plan, but one of the biggest mistakes I think the Eagles will make is when you take DeAndre Swift, out of the game, you limit what the Eagles are able to do. Oh, no. Right? The Eagles offensive line. Is, oh, my gosh. Yeah, it, it, it's it's stuff like this that happens. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's things like this that happens. Like, there's no protection for this kid in the back, you know, back there. So, it's like, it's chaos, guys. Like, run the freaking football. Play old school football. Yeah. Like, this is the playoffs. Yeah, I man. Mean, the like, score. all these sideways, <laughs> east and west passes. <laughs> I mean, we talked about the score, Eli. If the score got out of hand, they'd have to throw it every time. They're just one score down, right? Like Ray said, let's keep running the ball. And that protects right. the offensive lineman. That protects Jalen. Good push right there, right there. He's got in his face. Gosh. It's probably they ran the it on first they down. Want. They lost six yards. <laughs> yeah. So that's, you know, they're putting them, put them in a tough situation.